As class we looked at Kuskal's algorithm for computing minimum spanning trees. We were um, we we saw what the algorithm was, and what we were doing was uh, to complete the algorithm. We have to figure out how to detect if there is a cycle that gets formed when we add an edge into the current set of edges that have already been picked. So, um, if you recall, what we had said was that we would try and maintain the collection of connected components, right? So, I'm going to re revise part of that, but we are going to today look at a data structure for being able to do that, and that's called the union find data structure. So let us see where we were as far as uh, Kruskal's algorithm was concerned. We said um, I have already picked a set of edges. Recall that the set of edges would always form a forest, right? It would be a collection of trees. There would be no cycle that is already <coughs> existing. So these are the set of edges that have already been picked in Kruskal's algorithm. Now when I am trying to add a new edge, I have to check if it forms a cycle or not. Suppose this is the new edge being added, this forms a cycle and uh, one way of detecting whether a certain edge would form a cycle or not is to check if its two endpoints lie in the same tree of this forest. The tree is the same as the connect as a connected component and so it suffices to check whether the two endpoints of an edge lie in the same connected component, right? This is where we were at in the last class and so we have to somehow maintain our collection of connected components. Right? So as the algorithm proceeds, we had discussed this in the last class, the number of connected components reduces by 1 with every step. Initially we started off with n connected components. So initially we had n connected components and eventually, finally we have only how many connected components will we have? One. Right? This is how the algorithm proceeds. Okay. So I am going to abstract this problem out, and uh, <coughs> capture is capture it as a problem on maintaining a collection of disjoint sets. So what's the setting now? I have a universe of elements. Let us say I have elements E1, E2, E n. Let us say these are n elements in my universe, right? Initially each of these element is a set in itself. Right? Now the following operation, so this is a collection of disjoint sets that I have. Right. Initially, I have a collection of disjoint sets. At each stage, I am going to have a collection of disjoint sets. So, what we are trying to do is to maintain a collection of disjoint sets under the operations of, let us see what are the operations we are doing, going to be doing on these disjoint sets. Right. So, so what does the what do these elements correspond to in the case of Kruskal's algorithm? Right, but what are they initially? Initially, these E one, E two, E what are E one, E two, E three? These would be the vertices, the initial vertices, right? Now, what are the operations that we have to do on this collection of disjoint sets? Right, one operation is union. Right, the operation of union has to be done when I have one connected component. Right, I have another connected component and the edge that I add runs between these two connected components. Then the resulting thing would be this, this entire thing would be one connected component yeah? and uh, it should get reflected here by taking the union of the corresponding sets. So I have to do an operation of union that is one operation under which I have to maintain this collection of disjoint sets. So what do I mean by that? Suppose this collection has E1, E3 and E7 in it and this oh sorry this set has E1, E3 and E7 in it, this has E2, E5 and E9, then after the union I should not have these two sets in my collection but or what these two sets in the collection should get replaced by one set which is E1, E2, E3, E5, E7 and E9. The other operation that I have to do is 
right. So, given an edge, I have to look at the two endpoints of the edge and determine if they belong to the same connected component or not, right. So, the endpoints of the edge would be the two elements and I have to check given two elements whether they lie in the same set or not, right. So, we will call that an operation of find. So, what does find do? Let us say find takes as parameters two elements x and y and returns true if x comma y are in the same set. What should it return? Well, this is not this is not a complete uh, description of find. Uh, if x and y are not in the same set, what should find return? Pun? It should return the two sets in which those two elements lie. Why? Why should it return the two sets? Because then we need to do the union on those two sets, exactly. Right? So, union should take as parameters two sets, let us say S1 and S2 and should take their union somehow. Right. This is what we require of our data structure. So, this is not a comp accurate description of find, I will have to modify it, but you understand the need for returning the sets in which the two elements lie. Right. So, instead of find x comma y, let me have just an operation called find x, yeah, returns the set in which x lies there is a unique set in which x lies because our collection of sets is always a partition of the universe, right. So, there will be a unique set and we want to return that set. Then how will we implement this operation? We will do a find x, we will do a find y. If those two sets are the same, then we will conclude that uh, we are forming a cycle. If those two sets are different, then we would take the union of those two sets, yes. Right? Everyone following what? So, if I were to write down Kruskal's algorithm now, it would look like this. So, with this, assuming that these two operations exist, it would look something like this. I, uh, so, what was, what were the steps of Kruskal's algorithm? First, I sort the edges, sort the edges in increasing order of lengths. And let us say this ordering is E1, E2. Please do not confuse between this E and the element E that I had on the previous slide. This E correspond to edges and the previous one was elements, right. So, we will keep these separate. Okay, now, what should I do? For I equals 1 to M do. I pick an edge, right. What is the edge? E i. I am considering the edge E i. So, let E i equals u comma v, which means that u and v are the two end points of the edge E i. What is it that I have to do? If find u equals find v, then no, then it forms a cycle, then we do not have to do. So, I should really do not equal. If find u is not equal to find v, then T is T union E i. So, I should have some T initialized to null, yeah. And what else should I do? Union, find u, find v. Yes. Right. Of course, I need to initialize this collection of disjoint sets. So, I would have when I create this collection of disjoint sets, it will get initialized to what will it get initialized to? Singletons, right. So, each element in the collection would be the singleton vertex. Okay. 
So this would be what the procedure would look like now. We need to understand what kind of a data structure to keep for the find and uh, we, what kind of a data structure to keep for maintaining this collection of disjoint sets so that these operations can be done very quickly. How many times do we do the union operation and how many times do we do the find operation? Yeah, number of unions, right, because every time I do a union, I include an edge into my tree. How many edges can there be in my tree? Exactly n minus 1. So, I will have exactly n minus 1 unions. How many finds will I have? Right, for every edge I consider, I, I have to do 2 finds. In the worst case, how many edges will I consider? all the m edges, no more, right. So, number of finds is less than or equal to m. Okay, let us make it. Not equal to 2m. Okay, I have said for i equals 1 to m, but you know you can always break out of this procedure the moment you form a tree. Right. So, if you form a tree before, you can break out of this procedure of this for loop, right. So, you will keep it less than or equal to 2 n. Okay. So, what will be the total running time of this procedure then? If this operation let us say takes u time and this time takes f time, then what is the total running time? Anyone? This step will take m log m time plus u times n plus m times f, yes. So, now we have to find out a good data structure, by good we would mean we should do the u and which will have a small u and small f. Is everyone comfortable with this? Are there any questions till this point? Right. Can someone suggest a data structure to me? How will you maintain this collection of disjoint sets? Linked list, right. Let us say linked list. You are at the end of the course, but you cannot think beyond linked lists. Huh? <laughs> so, how will we have? We will have as many linked lists as the number of sets. Is that what you want to have? So, one linked list for each set, okay. No, let us complete this first. How much time does union take and how much time does find take? Union can be done in constant time, right. Agar aapki ye link list badi bhi ho gai hai, right. So, let us say we keep track of the front and the end of each link list. If we do that, then I can combine two link lists in constant time, yes. So, union will not take too much time. But how much time does find take? Order size of the linked list, which in the worst case could be n. Yeah. Now, is that good? If we were to do this, we will take m n time, which is too large. We are looking for a time complexity of something like m log m. Right. So, if you are looking for something like m log m, this quantity should be no more than log m and this quantity should also be no more than log m. We can permit it to be as large as log m. Yeah. So, this is not too good a data structure. Someone had another idea. What was your idea? Time for the homework break. So, this is self practice homework. Uh, give 5 minutes to think about a good data structure for implementing the union and find operations. And whatever data structures you come up with, think about the time complexity of the union 
and the and the find operations. Ah, oh, there is a mistake. This should have been the and the find operations. Okay. Yeah, and uh, we are going to cover the data structure in this class for this particular problem. But it's a good idea to spend five minutes thinking about it yourself. And when you are done, you can go back to the lecture. A tree. What will we do with a tree? How will we use a tree? Heap. Heap. What will you do with the heap? We check the minimum of the heap. Okay. And while union, we can merge the two heaps. How much time does it take to merge two heaps? Order n. Order n. H, H, height of the heap. Why? Why? Why does it take? If I have two heaps, why does it take order h time to merge them? Huh? Doesn't. Order smaller? No. Number of elements in the smaller array, but that could be as large as n by two, right? Okay. What else? Okay. So we'll have a new data structure for doing this. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what will a new data structure be? Let's. Set, I'll just show this thing to you, and then you'll understand what's happening. So suppose my universe was A, B, C, D, E, F, six elements, simple, right? So initially, recall that my what are the sets in my collection? The singletons A, B, C, D, E, F. So I have A, I have B. So I have one node for each of these six sets. Now suppose you say union. Uh, the set containing A, right? So you will say something like union find A, comma find B. The set containing A and the set containing B. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is to make one of them. So each of these nodes has only one pointer with it, or a reference, right? So it has a data field and one reference field. So I'll make one of these guys point to the other. Okay. So at the next step I will have when after I do this, this is what my collection looks like. These of course remain like as they are. Okay. Now suppose you were to say the same thing union find a comma find C. So when I say find A, when I say find A, I will start from A and keep going up till I hit the root. So this is now the root. How do I know it is the root? Because its pointer points to itself, let us say, so or it is null or whatever. Yes, when we do the union, so you will understand this you know, as, as we proceed. So this is what the trees look like. So each one of them is a tree. Right now this tree has only one node in it, but this tree has two nodes in it. And now the pointers are going up. We just have parent pointers, so to say. When I say find A, I'll start from A and keep going up the tree till I reach a node. Let's say its parent pointer is either null or it's pointing back to itself. Right at that point, I know it's a root. And so this says that find A the element A is in the set whose root or in which B is. So I come to B, so this is the element, this is the uh, set in which. So what we are doing is that for each set, how do we, how do we represent a set? So each set is represented by one of the elements in the set, yes? which is in this representation, it will be the root of the set. So in some sense, all the elements of a set elect a leader yeah? and this is the leader of that set. 
So, A and B are the only two elements in the set, the leader is B. So, when I say find A, it returns to me a reference to this node, which says that this is the root of the set to which in which element A lies. When I say find B, what will it return? The same thing. And then I can compare those two and determine that they are in the same set or not. Okay? So, what find A, find B returns are the roots of the corresponding trees. Okay? You will understand this as we proceed. What union does is it takes the root of these two trees and links them up, makes one point to the other. Right? So, for instance, here I might decide to make B point to C, in which case my new representation would look like this. Yes? Okay. Now, if I were to do a find A, what will be returned with by when I do a find A? A reference to C, a reference to this node. And when I do a find B, what is returned? A reference to the same node. So, I can compare these two. So, I can return a C or I can return a reference. Actually, it is best to return a reference because then that can be used by the union operation. What do you mean C was not alone? Okay, if C was not alone, I understand what you mean if C was not alone. We will come to when C is not alone. Yeah? So, so all we are doing is taking the roots and merging them. So, suppose at this point, I did another operation which was union find D find E. Yeah? So, what will I do? I link up the roots for D and D. So, let us say I decide to make D point to E. Yeah? Now, as you can see D and E are not alone. So, if I decide to do an operation like, right? so let's, let me keep this picture there and if I were to do let us say union or let me write it down here, union find A comma find D, then what does find A return? It returns a pointer to C, D returns a pointer to E, I need to link up these two roots. So, I can make C point to E or I can make E point to C whichever I please. Let us say I decide to make C point to E, okay. this is what I would get then and of course, F would be sitting on its own. Time for a homework break. So, this is a graded homework, you need to submit this homework, but we will make it the best effort. So, Professor Naveen just described a union and a fine data structures. So, what is the asymptotic worst case time complexity for these operations? That is question number one. Second, you construct a sequence of union operations such that the find operation takes the worst time. So, maybe you can think of a set of size n and then construct n union operations in a way that the next find operation takes the worst amount of time. And then can you think about, think of a method to improve the complexity of the find operation. Okay? So, do not look at the lecture ahead, just think it for yourself and then submit whatever you come up with. Everyone understands what the procedure is. Yeah? So, you understand what the find operation is. What does find operation do? It starts from the element and keeps tracing the pointers up till it hits the root. Exactly. So, you have a list of vertices. Right? So, when I have an edge, I have its two endpoints, I have the vertices and from that vertex list, I might have references to this node. Right? Recall you have a data structure for your graph, right? in which you have an array. So, suppose I had an adjacency list representation. 
So this array would contain my list of vertices, right? I could have another reference from here to this node here for every. So if this was node vertex B, so I could have another reference from here to here so that I can access this straight away. Right? This is just referring to this particular node and so this will always remain the same, there is no problem with that. Right? So what is the problem with this implementation? So how much time does union take? So union takes now as input references of two root nodes. Right? And so all it has to do is to modify one pointer, one reference to point to the other, to refer to the other one. Right? So union takes order one time. But how much time does find take? Find could take a lot of time because it might have to go through a very long list to reach the root. In the worst case. Right? Can you construct a sequence of unions in which this would happen? Right, I decide first to merge AB, then AC, then AD, then AE and AF and if you were to doing the union in this order, then things would go bad. Yeah? So we have to do the unions in a more clever manner. Huh? Find. No, we will do the union in a clever manner. Right. So recall that when we were linking elements, we had an option either link make one point to the other or point the make the other point to the first one yeah so now we will exploit that okay so i'm going to ru use a rule called union by rank in which if i have two trees right and uh, Suppose this has n1 nodes in it and this has n2 nodes in it, then I will make the lighter tree point to the heavier one. So this, so without loss of generality, let us say n1 is less than n2. So then I will make this point to that. We will make the lighter point to the heavier. Right? Now you will not have this kind of a scenario in which uh, you know if you had these let us say 6 elements, first you made this point to this right? and then when you are trying to combine this and this, you, you will not make this point to this anymore. What will happen now? You will make this guy point to this and now this tree has 3 nodes in it. So if this combines with this, you will make this point to this and this point to this and this point to this, right? So that now what is the height of this tree that I get? One only, right? And so find will take very little time. Time for a homework break. This is a self-practice homework. So try to find out what is the asymptotic worst case time complexity of the union and find using union by rank just discussed. Second part is what additional information you need to store in your data structures to implement union by rank. And then in the union step and find steps, how do you modify this information? How do you efficiently modify this information? And you don't need to submit this, just try to solve it yourself and then go back to the lectures. These problems will be discussed in the subsequent discussion. Okay. So we have to see that if we use this rule, what can be the height of the tree in the worst case? How high can the tree become? Right? How high can the tree become if we use this rule? Anyone? Log in. Why? Because we need to get the find procedure to log in. 
first will be the pairs of n by 2, n by 2 each. Hmm. That is the worst case. You are trying to construct a worst case, but, but uh, that need not be the way we do things, right? Or that need not be the worst case. How will you argue that this rule of union by rank will lead to trees which have height? So, what is the claim we want to make? Uh, no, not the height is minimum. A tree with n1 or n no n1 nodes let us say has height less than or equal to log of n1. So, the worst case will come when, uh, when at each level there are just two children. Suppose I have to make prove this claim a tree with n1 nodes. So, at any point if I have a tree with n1 nodes in it, it has height at most log of n 1, ठीक है, prove कर सकते हैं आप इसे, by induction. Time for a homework break. This is also a self practice homework. If you could do the proof in the earlier homework, then you don't need to worry about it. But uh, if you couldn't, then this is another opportunity. Formally prove by induction that the height of any tree with n nodes would be less than or equal to log to the base 2 n. Do not look at the proof, Professor Naveen is going to cover this proof in the subsequent discussions, but uh, try to solve it yourself before you come to the proof. It will really help you to develop problem solving skills for the problems that you have not seen before. Okay? And then, you know, if you cannot do it in 5 minutes, that is okay, come back to the lecture. Or if n1 is equal to n2, then it would be n1 plus 1. Good. So, let us use induction. I am not going to write down the proof formally, but I will tell you what the procedure is. So, I am combining two trees, one n1 nodes, the other n2 nodes. Loss of gen without loss of generality, let us say n1 is less than or equal to n2. Yeah? Let us assume that the induction hypothesis is true till this stage of my procedure. That means that is key height is less than or equal to log of n 1 and ischi height is less than or equal to log of n 2. Everyone with me? Now, we have to show that as a consequence of this, I will get a new tree with how many nodes in it? n 1 plus n 2 would be the number of nodes in the new tree. So, I have to argue that its height is no more than log of n 1 plus n 2. Let us see whether that is true. Yeah. So, what are the two cases? n 1 strictly less than n 2. What will be the height? No, what will be the height? The height could be so height of resulting tree is either the height of this tree. So, we have done this. It is either the height of this tree or it is the height of this tree plus a 1. Yeah? So, height of resulting tree, agar iski height h1 hai or iski height h2 hai. So, height of resulting tree is less than or equal to max of h2, h1 plus 1. It can take a value of h1 plus 1 also. h2 or h1 equal hongi na? n1 or n2 the equal nahi hongi. Oh, the height of resulting tree, okay, fine. Equals max of h2, fine. 
ठीक है नाउ लेट सी दिस इज द हाइट ऑफ द रिजल्टिंग ट्री इफ दिस वैल्यू इक्वल्स एच टू देर आर टू पॉसिबिलिटीज इधर दिस वैल्यू इज इक्वल टू एच टू बट एच टू इज लेस देन लॉग ऑफ एन टू विच इज लेस देन लॉग ऑफ एन वन प्लस एन टू The other possibility is this quantity equals h1 plus 1, which is less than or equal to log of n1 plus 1, which is equal to log of 2 times n1, which is less than or equal to log of n1 plus n2. One, because yeah, because n two is greater than or equal to n one. So actually, we have not used the fact that n one is strictly less than n two. Have we used the fact? Here, yeah. so it will become equal, but that's okay, right? So I don't really need this. So what have I said? I one of the trees is has lesser or equal number of nodes than the other if they are equal actually you can connect in any way right so i made one point to the other this by induction hypothesis is height at most log of n1 this is height at most log of n2 yeah now what is the height of the resulting tree it's either the height of this tree or it's the height of this tree plus a one If it's the height of this tree, then it's log of n two, which is less than or equal to log of n one plus n two. If it is this tree plus one, the height of this tree plus one, then it is log of n one plus one, which is log of the same as log of two times n one, which is less than or equal to log of n one plus n two, because n two is larger than n one. Is the base case true? For n equals one, the height becomes zero. <coughs> Let's define the tree of zero with the only one node as having a height zero. Okay. If n equals two, this becomes one, which is okay. When you have a uh, two nodes in the tree, it has height one. Then, by definition. Okay. So now, what are we saying? If this is, if the tree has only one node in it, this has height zero. If this is the case, it has height one. So I'm counting the number of edges on the longest path from the from one of the leaves to the root i'm counting the number of edges and not the number of nodes everyone with me so what does this show so is this a complete proof what am i doing an induction on number of nodes in the tree right so assuming that the statement is true for all nodes of a certain Uh, less than a certain number i can say okay it's true for this when i link this and i get a tree with larger number of nodes it will continue to be true okay great <coughs>